Welcome to part two of this video in which we use the relationship between shear force and bending moment to find the moment diagram. Uh, well, we've already found the shear diagram. To find the moment diagram for this beam which has been loaded with these concentrated forces. So again, the purpose of this video is to show how you do it when the beam is loaded with concentrated forces. There will be a subsequent video that shows how you do it when the beam is loaded with distributed forces. So, um, oops, just uh, gave away the punchline. Okay, so here we have this relationship between the uh, bending moment and um, the, uh, uh, the shear force. And again, the idea is that the bending moment is the integral or the area under the shear force waveform from zero to the point that you're interested in. And you can get the shear force waveform as the slope of the bending moment at a given point. So let's go back to our plot that shows our uh, shear force diagram. And let's see if we can use this to, um, or we can use this to help us understand how to get the bending moment. Okay, so let's start with the case where x is between 0 and 6. Actually, that's a bad color to scribble this in with since we've got a white background here. Okay. Okay, so this, we're looking at this point. So we're looking at x between 0 and 6 feet. Okay, we know that the we know that the relationship is m of x is the integral from 0 to x of v of x prime dx prime, okay? So if I take this x and relabel it x prime and relabel this x prime, so I'm talking about I still have the same function, but I'm calling its argument a different thing. This integral is the area under v of x between 0 and x. So if this is my value of x, then this m of x is just going to be this area. Okay, And those of you that are pretty good at geometry might be able to just look at that and figure out what it is in your heads. But I want to make sure that it's clear how we figure this out mathematically because later on things will not be nearly as obvious geometrically. So I can write this as the integral between 0 and x and be of, well, between 0 and x of this vx prime. Whenever x prime is between 0 and x, vx prime is 12,000 pounds. So I can write this as the integral of 12,000 pounds dx prime. This is a constant, and so I have the integral from, I, I, I can take the constant out, and I'll have then the integral from 0 to x of dx prime. And when I work that out, I get 12,000 pounds times x minus 0. Okay, and clearly um, the minus 0 part goes away. And so I have between 0 and, for x between 0 and 6 feet, m of x is 12,000 pounds. Okay, isn't that great? Hopefully that wasn't too bad. Let's look at another segment, the one between, between 6 feet and 10 feet. Okay, so if x is between, whoops, Let's rewrite this properly. If x is between 6 feet and 10 feet, then m of x is going to be the integral from 0 to x of v of x prime dx prime. But I can break that integral up into two pieces. And the reason I do it is the integral from 0 to 6 feet, that I already know. It's actually m of 6. So this would be 0 to 6 feet, vx prime 
dx prime plus the integral from 6 feet to x of v x prime dx prime. This guy here is basically what I computed over here. And so I can write this as m of 6 feet. And in our case right here, m of 6 feet is going to be, uh, let's see, 12,000 pounds times 6 feet, which is 72,000 foot-pounds. Okay. And so the next thing I need to do then is find this integral from 6 feet to x. Well, to do that, I look at the value that vx prime has between 6 feet er, and 10 feet, and it's 0. So this guy here, in fact, we'll change colors to be dramatic here. This guy here is going to be the integral from 6 feet to x of 0 dx prime. And this is just going to be 0, right? Because if I integrate 0, it's 0. Okay, so this chunk of it is given by my 72,000 foot-pounds. This chunk is 0. So what we can say then is between 6 feet and 10 feet, m of x is just equal to, well here we'll write it out here, this is equal to 72,000 foot-pounds. Okay, so for this particular uh, part of the, of the function between 6 feet and 10 feet, m of x actually doesn't depend on x. Okay, well let's look at what happens now between 10 feet and 18 feet, this guy here. Uh, let's see, we'll grab a slightly less um, a slightly less drawn on sheet. Whoops, just gave away the punchline again. Okay, so for 10 feet between, or x between 10 feet and 18 feet, we have m of x is the integral from 0 to x of v x prime dx prime. Actually, I just rewrote what we have up here. Let me change this a little bit. We'll break this into two parts. This will be the integral from 0 to 10 feet plus the integral from 10 feet to x. Okay, and as we had before, we know that um, this guy here is m of 10 feet, which we just computed. If you remember, we computed this and it's 72,000 foot-pounds. So now we just need to compute this integral, which again, for dramatic effect, we'll do in a different color. This guy here is going to be the integral from 10 feet to x, and between 10 feet and 18 feet, vx prime is minus 4,000 pounds. Okay, so we have um, <coughs> this integral. When we, this minus 4,000 pounds is a constant, so it can come outside the integral. So we'll have, this is equal to minus 4,000 pounds, x minus 10 feet. And I can multiply these two guys together and uh, work it out so I get minus 4,000 pounds x plus 40,000 foot-pounds. Okay, and so what I can say then is that this m of x is going to be 72,000 foot-pounds um, plus 40,000 foot-pounds minus 4,000 pounds times x, which, if I've done this correctly, should be 112,000 
foot-pounds minus 4,000 pounds x. Whew. Okay, there we go. Between 10 feet and 18 feet, we now have what m of x is. It's given by this expression. So the last thing we need to do is work this out between 18 feet and 20 feet. So um, let's do that. This is taking more writing than I expected, so we'll come up with one more. Okay, so now we're looking at, um, well, let's see what's a nice color here. I'll we'll do it in red. We're looking at this point here, where x is between 18 and 20 feet. Okay, so, whoa, I have no idea what happened there. By the way, that's my channel page. If you're interested in the videos, go look at it. It shows you what all sorts of videos there are available. Okay, so after that inadvertent advertisement, uh, we have m of x. It's the integral from 0 to x, and this again is going to be 18 feet is less than x, which is less than 20 feet. So it's going to be the integral from 0 to 18 feet, v of x prime dx prime, plus the integral from, oops, no minus there, 18 feet to x of v x prime dx prime. So again, this guy here is m of 18 feet, which if I plug this into my previous expression for m, <coughs> excuse me, this is uh, 72 Yeah, this should be, um, oh, my notes here are failing me. This should be 40,000 feet, I believe. You'll have to check this because something just went terribly wrong in my notes. Okay, so this is 40,000 foot-pounds. This integral is going to be the integral from 18 feet to x of minus 20,000 pounds dx prime, which becomes then um, <coughs> minus 20,000 pounds x minus 18. That's a feet. So this is minus 20,000 pounds x plus 360,000 foot-pounds. And so when we put these two together, we add this and this, include this, we have then m of x is equal to 400,000 foot-pounds minus 20,000 pounds x. So there you have it. We have m of x for our last segment. So um, now we can go back to this uh, plot. What I've done here for m of x is I've just plotted the function that we just came up with. So between 0 and 6, this is 12,000 times x. Between 6 and 10, this is just 72,000. Between 10 and 18, this is 112,000 minus 4,000x. And finally, between 18 and 20, this is 400,000 minus 20,000x. Okay. And again, you can see that, hopefully based on our derivation of this, or our computation of this, you can see that m of x is the area under v up to a certain value. So if x is right here, I had this area up here to go up. Now I'm using this negative area here to come back down. And you can see that v is the slope of m of x. 
So here the slope is 12,000. That's 12,000. Here the slope is 0. That's 0. Here the slope is minus 4,000. That's minus 4,000. And here the slope is minus 20,000. That's minus 20,000. So there you have it, an exhaustive description of how to compute um, moment, bending moment diagrams from shear diagrams. And I hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching.